So um, thanks everyone for sticking around for the last session. And uh, I will be the first to admit that the portal is not the most exciting topic of the day. Uh, but it does contain a lot of information that's useful if you are a first time user to the portal. So what is the portal? And the full name is the Cedar Direct, I still have to read this, the Cedar Direct Next Gen Collaboration Portal, but everyone calls it the portal for short. So that's what we're gonna, from here on out, just call it the portal. And this is a website where industry can submit information and requests to the FDA for different things. And the focus today is gonna be on how to use a portal for pre and meetings and control correspondences. There's actually other uses for the portal, such as uh, you can report drug shortages on there. And there's a few other things as well. So what are some of the features of the portal? There's uh, one of the great things is it has two-way communication. You submit and receive documents through the portal with a, uh, an email notification. So what that means is you'll get an email notifying you that there's now a new document for you to review in the portal and you can click directly through the email into the portal and read that document. But it's, safe, but it's housed in the portal. Uh, so all your documents and correspondence is in one place which is nice, and uh, new that's been added is now we have multi-factor authentication. So the multi-factor authentication, uh, we started that in February 2019, and this was to add a second layer of security to the portal. And uh, what happens is just t very typical of any of the, I'm sure you guys use banking websites, et cetera, after using, entering your username and password, you'll receive a unique code via email. This code is used for the account holder verification piece. And if you do have any questions or problems with this, you can email the edms support uh, at fta.hhs.gov, and they'll be able to help you out. So what should you use the portal for? Um, so pre and meetings, which is my thing, so I, I like that. I think you should use it for that. And uh, control correspondence, which is new. So for the pre and meeting request, these are for the complex generic products, and this is where you would submit your request for product development meeting or pre-submission meeting. Uh, control correspondence, which as I said is new as of, as of October 1 of 2018. And one thing you should not use it for is for mid-review cycle meetings. The FDA will contact you if you're eligible for one of those, so that's not included in the meeting scopes. So in order to use the portal for the pre a and a meeting requests, the first thing you need to do is, assign, is obtain a pre-assigned a and a number. So I have the instructions kind of written out here. There's a uh, nice website on uh, FDA. If you just Google pre-assigned number, it'll come up, and it'll give you all these same instructions and, and links. Uh, you will need to uh, have a U.S. agent if you're a non-U.S. applicant, and you're going to need to know your reference listed drug. And one thing to take note, I know that uh, there's some information out there that might be misleading, but pre-assigned a &D numbers are issued within three days, but they do not expire, so they don't expire. So the next step that you want to do is you want to create a login for the portal. Um, so once you're on your website, it's again very similar to any other uh, website that you might be using out there where you request a login. And you're going to choose your event is what we call them, events, but they're really like the categories. So for example, pre a and meetings or control correspondence or drug shortages or the different types of events you can choose. And you can have more than one event added to your account. So you could, if you are involved in pre a and meetings and in controls, you can have both of those. So it's going to ask you some basic information, your name, email, et cetera. And then once you're approved, you'll receive a username and temporary password. Uh, but your login request will not be processed until you verify your email. Again, just like any other website. So some frequently asked questions are, my organization doesn't appear when I search, because you can search for your organization by typing in, say, a few letters. It'll start to bring up different organizations. And if it doesn't appear, you can enter it manually. If you, it will also ask you for your DUNS number. 
If you don't have a DUNS number or you don't know what it is, you can use the nine digit code. Now, uh, I will say that someone mentioned to me that it's not working right now for them, so I'll make sure to go back and get that fixed if that is true. And again, here's the EDM support team that you would go to if you're having difficulty with your login. So for U.S. agents, if you're submitting as a U.S. agent, you need to fill out your applicant's information. Again, uh, you would search your applicant information or enter it manually, and you provide their contact information. If you are the applicant, so you're in the U.S., you are the applicant, you're not using a U.S. agent, then we can proceed directly to attach a document, and please do not enter yourself as a U.S. agent, so don't enter yourself twice as both a U.S. agent and a, a firm. One thing that we've had happen quite a few times is uh, you might have a change of POC or your change of U.S. agent to say someone leaves the company that's been handling your control correspondence or handling your meetings, and what do you do when that happens? Um, so you need to submit a, uh, first the new person needs to submit a new user account request in the portal, and then send an email for either pre to help for meetings or generic drugs for control correspondence with the subject line change of POC or U.S. agent request. And here is the information that the email needs to include in order, in order for us to process it. So the previous POC name and email, new POC full name, new POC phone number. The list of the meeting IDs or control IDs that you want transferred to the new account holder. Because what we're going to do is we're actually going to transfer them out of the other one, out of the old account, into the new account. And then do you want to deactivate the previous POC account? So for example, the person has actually left the company and, no longer, and you no longer want them associated with your company, then we deactivate that account. So uh, if you're submitting your meeting request, the next thing to do is create a new request. And again, it's going to ask you for some basic required information. Here's where the pre-assigned number comes in. Uh, the type of meeting request you're submitting, so that would be a product development meeting request or a pre-submission meeting request. You'll need to know your RLD, and for pre-ANDA pre meetings, you need to know an RLD, and RS will not suffice, it needs to be an RLD. And then the U.S. agent, if applicable. And in order to proceed, you must add your meeting package at this time, which is different from the new drug size where you can add your, uh, send in your meeting package later. And also, multiple documents can be submitted. So when you add your documents, as I said, you can add more than one document. Uh, for example, you can add a cover letter, which is not required, but you could add one. And then your meeting package, which is due at the time of the request for a meeting. I just want to reiterate that again. And we have several formats um, that are allowed. If you have a format that you don't see here that you want to be able to submit, then uh, send an email to that EDM support, and we will work on getting it um, into the system. Right now, macros are not allowed, and files cannot exceed 45 megabytes. So when you're submitting your meeting request, uh, you have the option of saving your draft meeting requests. So you've entered some of it, you've maybe even uploaded some documents, but you're not quite ready to submit it. You can hold it there, and you can come back later to it and continue where you left off. The FDA cannot see a, a meeting requests that you've saved that you have not submitted yet. So you don't need to worry about us peeking in your stuff. Uh, <laughs> You can delete a meeting request if you haven't submitted it. So you got all the way, maybe you added a bunch of stuff, you changed your mind, whatever, you can delete that meeting request. Uh, you'll be asked to review for accuracy before that final button, and then you can click Submit to FDA, and you'll get a confirmation email. So what kind of documents go through the portal? So this is really... Uh, tailored to the meeting 
requests, but a cover letter, meeting packages, information requests. So we might send you an, a request for information and you would respond back in the, we would send that through the portal, and you would respond back in the portal with your information that was requested. Uh, preliminary responses for pre a &A meetings go through the portal. You would send back your updated agenda and presentation materials um, before the meeting, if you had them. Uh, written responses go through the portal. Post-meeting comments from the applicant, which we request those within seven days of the meeting, and then the final meeting minutes from the FDA. So really, all of these documents are going back and forth through this portal. For control correspondence, there is no pre-assigned number needed. And your submission should include your question. And then please refer to this guidance because they're um, quite particular on the information that needs to be included with the control correspondence. But it's clearly laid out in this guidance. And you will also need a letter of authorization if you're submitting on behalf of another company. Here again, you'll need to specify your RLD. Use the RLD per the orange book, even if the RLD has been discontinued. That's still your RLD, as we talked about in the, uh, uh, as talked about in the talk before. In this case, for control correspondence, as opposed to pre a meetings, if there's no RLD, you can choose the reference standard instead. And post-approval change controls do not need an RLD or an RS, because they typically can you know, span multiple. If you need help, there are several help guides and tutorials that are on the Learn More page for, for your reference. And again, here's the, uh, the EDMS support email. And also for meeting-specific help, you can contact pre anda help at fda.hhs.gov. So if you have some questions related specifically to meetings, that's where you would send them. Um, what's coming up next? And uh, we continue to sort of expand the portfolio of what can be done on the portal is the pre-assigned application number requests are going to be able to get requested through the portal. And it's going to be released later this year. Similar to the existing request types, uh, in, you know, quick intuitive data entry. And the, all your correspondence, again, now will still be uh, will be conveniently together in, the, in your um, account. And then more updates to follow. So we'll continue to expand on that portfolio. That's all. Thank you.